And then uh, we ended up with four new uh, complainants and did a very thorough investigation. Uh, more than 60 witnesses uh, were interviewed. The report is a 100-page report. Anyone uh, can read a redacted version of the report. So you can see what you see, and then you can decide what you think uh, about it. Uh, but the finding, which for, you know, for me, during the process, the most important thing was simply to protect the integrity of the process. Uh, if you have complainants, you have to take complaints seriously. And then when you take them seriously, you have a, the University of California has a very clear process for how you collect the information and do an assessment, and then you follow through. Um, there was a finding, and there's a couple of things about that finding. The first thing about the finding was that um, there was not a challenge of the facts of the finding. So one possibility in any of these circumstances is that an investigator can decide based on an assessment of all the evidence that there, that there was a violation of university policy. That if, if someone disagrees, you can challenge that assessment. So there wasn't a challenge of the factual findings. That's not to say that people can't have different opinions about the factual findings, but if there was a disagreement among the parties, that could have been dealt with in a certain way. So no one was disagreeing with the findings. Then there's a period of consultation to decide what the appropriate next step is. And um, that next step, uh, if there's not a consensus, has to involve the Academic Senate Privilege and Tenure Committee. And before we had finalized a decision about what we might recommend the privilege and tenure, and then you would hold a whole hearing, and then the faculty would decide about what was proportionate or not, um, uh, Dr. Ayala chose to resign. And the decision to resign was a completely voluntary decision. It was not required by the university. And uh, if there was a sense that uh, a better outcome, a different outcome could have, uh, was more appropriate, there was an entire process for us to go through to get to that outcome. And uh, Dr. Ayala did not want to um, uh, pursue that option. His preference was uh, to uh, resign. So the idea that the university fired Dr. Ariala is just not true. And if you think, well, it would have been excessive if one of the things the university did was fire Dr. Ariala, then all I can convey to you is that we didn't do that. He chose voluntarily to resign. And uh, because he did not choose to disagree with the factual findings of the report, um, and there was no disagreement on the part of Dr. Ayala that one of the things that was appropriate to happen was that his name not be associated in the way that it had been associated with the school and the, the library. Um, it could have evolved in a very different way if people had different points of view about what the report uh, said. But once that uh, decision, voluntary decision to resign was made, I can't talk someone out of uh, resigning if uh, they think that's in their best interest. And, um, and so there wasn't punishment in the way that you normally think of punishment, which is that the administration got a report and then the administration imposed sanctions. There was no imposition of sanctions. There was a report, a finding, and then after consulting with advisors, a decision on the part of the respondent to resign. There was a separate independent decision to remove uh, the name, and that was not disagreed with. Um, and uh, in light of that, I'm actually tremendously proud that the university uh, took seriously the complaints. We had a process. The process was um, the process that everyone would uh, go through. It raises interesting ongoing questions, and we, we welcome all of the ongoing conversations about how we should be thinking about these issues in the future. Um, we are at a moment in the history of the country where uh, if you want to make sure that everyone is talking all the way through a dinner party, just raise this general question and you'll get <laughs> hours of conversation uh, about it. You can't even uh, nominate a Supreme Court justice uh, these days without uh, some of these issues arising as well. And uh, what I will say that I'm proud of is that the university uh, maintained the integrity of the process and then all of the parties made the decisions that they were going to make. But we're not going to be getting away from this issue as a society or as a campus. 
and uh, we should continue to talk. The one thing I will add, uh, just as a final punctuation, is that we did, we did have uh, the provost write a note to the uh, community because I think there's different ways of continuing the conversation. First, you want to make sure that all the facts are the facts that are on the table. Um, and so maybe this has been a little bit of a clarification. But um, some, uh, some of the people who initially were the complainants have experienced sort of very targeted criticisms that they, that they had made these complaints in the first place. And I, I hope there's at least an agreement that even if we have different points of view about pieces of it, it, it should not be the case that one of the consequences of someone reaching out to the university and asking them to do an investigation is that those people at all are sort of targeted or criticized or isolated or marginalized as a result of that. You know the university policies as well as anyone. There can be no retaliation under these circumstances. And, and so I hope that as we continue the conversation, we do it in a, in a way that is respectful of all the parties and their perspectives. And, uh, but in general, I'm, I'm proud that the university maintained the integrity of a process that the entire University of California had worked many years to create. Sure. Okay, I'm gonna try and reframe this a little bit as I ask it. So the initial question was the Center for Maritime Retirees sends out volunteers.